Do you find yourself holding on to limiting beliefs? Do you feel like you have an illness or a chronic ailment and you're holding on to it because that's what you believe you are? You believe that it's a part of you? Well, in today's video, I'm going to share with you a really personal story about myself, who's been um, an ancient medicinal practitioner for a few years now, and I'm still holding on to certain limiting beliefs. For more videos about how to use ancient medicine to live your most energetic, vibrant life, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell so you can be notified every time I post a video. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys a story about something that happened to me last week. First, I'm gonna tell you my healing journey. My healing journey um, happened to me, started 20 years ago when I was told by doctors to give up my passion for dance. Dance was my life. I felt most alive when I was dancing. So it was actually really devastating to hear that. But basically they said, you've injured your knees and they're so worn out and so gone that you basically have the knees of a 60 year old in your twenties. And um, I, I went to different doctors, I went to physio and nothing helped. My knees were my knees and I couldn't do anything about it. And then I came across ancient medicine, ancient wisdom, and I started to use that to heal myself. And fast forward to today, I run my own dance school. I'm dancing nine hours a week. I do yoga every day. I work out and I have no issues. So I'm well versed in the ability to use this medicine. I'm a clinical herbalist. I'm a purveyor of ancient medicine. So I am well versed in using it to heal myself. However, 18 months ago, I was awoken to a limiting belief that I have been holding on to. I took my kids for their regular eye checkup and the doctor called me in and she said, your daughter's eyes are deteriorating so quickly that we need to put her on this program where we put eye drops in her eyes every night or twice a day and she wears contact lenses. Um, otherwise, her eyes are just going to get worse and worse and worse very fast. Um, and in that moment, something snapped because I have been wearing glasses my entire life almost. I've been wearing glasses since the age of 11. And I believed that that was in my DNA. My mom had, um, she, she was nearsighted and I believed I got it from her and now I pass it on to my daughter. But something in me snapped and I thought, there's no way she's going through this. There's no way that she has to have poor vision like the rest of us. And that chain is going to stop at her. But in order to do that, I had to break my limiting belief that my eyesight was part of who I was and that there was no way to fix my eyesight. Regardless of how I had been able to heal my knees, for some reason, I still believed that I could not heal my eyes using ancient medicinal wisdom. I don't know why, but it was a belief that I held on to. I believed it was in my DNA. It was genetics. I had inherited it. And that was that. But hearing that my child was also inheriting this, I found my why. I found my reason to believe in the ability or my body's ability to heal my eyes. So I left there thinking, I'm going to have to do something. And so I asked the doctor one question. I said, what is it that causes somebody's eyesight to deteriorate this way? Why do so many of us need glasses? Why are so many children wearing prescription glasses at a younger and younger ages? And she said, it's because the eye muscle has difficulty relaxing. Um, it's, it's tense, it's tight, which is causing vision to go bad, most likely because of screen time. Um, and I thought to myself, okay, so this is about relaxation. We'll, we'll reduce our screen time. We're going to figure this out. We get home and two months later, we're in this middle of this pandemic. All the kids are in virtual school. There is no hope of reducing screen time. Her screen time, my daughter's screen time actually just skyrocketed um, ever since this pandemic started. Um, so if that sounds like you, if you have children or if you've been wearing glasses and your screen time has gone up through the pandemic, leave a comment below. Let me know because I'm about to share with you what really matters when it comes to your eyesight. And so I, I was I was frustrated because now I need to work on my eyesight. I'm already having doubts and I need to help her and um, virtual learning isn't really on our side right now. But I remembered that the doctor didn't say specifically that it was the screen time that was causing the issues 
what she said to me was that it was the fact that the muscle was tense. It wasn't able to relax. That was causing her problems. So uh, I created a protocol and a way for her to start to relax her eyes. And we talked about this. We all hold stress in different places in our body. And given her body type, um, she has a lot of fire in her. She was holding it in her eyes and that was causing her eyesight to deteriorate um, very quickly. So her and I started to go through this protocol and it was, it was challenging for me because as we went through this process, my own disbelief kept coming up. My own disbelief in the fact that I could heal my eyes kept coming up. And I kept having to hold on to the fact that if I want to heal my daughter, I have to also heal myself. I have to believe, I have to believe that I can better my eyesight prescription. So four months ago, I started to notice that, you know, I was having difficulty reading. Um, if someone handed me a menu or a piece of paper, I was doing like one of these where you go back and forth. Um, and I thought that I needed reading glasses and it made sense. I'm at the age where um, it could be required. But actually, I was afraid to go back to the eye doctor. I was afraid because if I felt like if I heard her say, you need reading glasses, here I am trying to improve my eyesight and she's going to tell me I need reading glasses, everything's going to go downhill. So I was trying to avoid it, um, but eventually we had to go and get our eyes checked last week. And when I went in, I told her what was going on and she said, listen, you're at that age um, and it's quite likely that what you need is reading glasses. And I was fully prepared to walk out of her office with a pair of reading glasses. But instead, after she checked my eyes, she said to me, your problem isn't reading, you're fine. Your reading is perfectly fine. Your problem is that your prescription, your contact lenses are too strong for you. Um, your vision has actually improved and you need a weaker contact lens. So it gave me a little uh, hope for my daughter and so she went in and I could not even process my own happiness about my eyesight until I heard about what was going on with her. Um, so she comes out after her checkup and the doctor in her, in her exact words said, your daughter has justified all odds. Her eyesight has not budged a bit in 18 months. For her age, this is unheard of. It is unheard of for someone her age whose eyesight was on a certain decline for it to just suddenly stop. And I thought, oh my God, this, this works. And I realized in that moment that she had a lot less resistance than I did be, being a child, but it was her, her lack of resistance and my desire for her to get better that was, that allowed me to break my belief. And I share this with you guys, not to tell you not to go to doctors and just believe you'll get better and you'll get better because that's not what we did. We had to do work um, to get ourselves better. There was work involved. But if you are working with an ancient medicinal practitioner, even if you're working with a doctor, it is so, so important to shift your mindset, to accept the fact that you do not deserve the chronic ailment. You do not deserve the illness. You didn't inherit it through your DNA. It's not happening to you because of, you know, um, some events or something that you've experienced. It's not, it's not something that's happened to you because if you've been in an accident and you've been injured, it's not happening to you because you're a woman. And this really helped me resonate with my clients because so many of my clients come to me with PMS and say to me, but this is just part of being a woman. And I know that's not true, but for them, it's very hard to believe that women are meant to live pain-free. Their periods aren't meant to be painful and PMS isn't meant to be a hindrance it's very hard for them to believe. But once they break that belief barrier, they're already done half the work to healing. And it's only so I hope that helps all of you. I wanted to come in here and be candid. If you're interested in learning more on how to stop painful periods forever and stop PMS and live a reality of painless periods, um, do check out the links in the description below. You can download my free guide, Five Natural Ways to Stop PMS Mood Swing. Remember, if you're experiencing PMS, if you're having issues with your eyesight, leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on with you. Let me know what you're experiencing. And for more ways to stop PMS, be sure to check out these videos.